and that's on both Linux and Windows. I never get a, a smooth a smooth tra- transmission between my hand and the screen, the pointer and the screen. Um, give me a mouse with a roller ball in it any day. Sorry, I back over to you. Oh, uh, you know, maybe you're using that. I'm now using Logitech now. It never gave me. Actually, I used several of them. Uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> the Mac as well. Mac as well. Um, on on the Mac, when I've used Wi-Fi. I thought you meant wireless at first, because I, I I thought he couldn't he couldn't be serious about the lasers, because they they work quite okay, even without using a pad. I personally use a pad with it for other reasons, just it's more comfortable. It's uh, maybe, maybe it's a weight. Maybe maybe it's a weight on on the actual mouse itself. Maybe that's what it is. Um, I've never quite worked out. Maybe it's another one of my uh, psychological hang-ups. Uh, but, actually, actually, the ball sometimes gets stuck in all sorts of uh, even without dirt and gunk and stuff like that. Uh, I'll, you have I'll, resist, I'll, I'll resist the urge to go into the infantile humour if I keep my ball clean, but I certainly do. And it's a, a little bit of alcohol dropped in a in a cup for a couple of a uh, couple of minutes, wiped off with a with a bit of cotton wool, bung it back in, it's fine. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, I cannot get away from the old fashioned now, if that's such a such a term. So uh, yeah, sorry. Cheaper. I think it's cheaper now to mass produce them the way they are. Yeah. Uh, the thing I was going to say is uh, with tablets. Whenever I hear tablets. Uh, Whenever people hear tablets, one of the first things they think now is iPad. Uh, in the past, you know, tablets are not a new thing. Uh, just as a network, PC is not a new thing. You know, oh, we'll store all your data and we'll deliver it to you over the network. Well, great. <laughs> and you'll deliver me my data over the network. Well, why would I want that? You know, I could store it in my computer and actually work on it here. So it's a lot of marketing, um, trying to tell people they need a tablet because they'll sit next to some sexy girl in the train, train and she'll stare at your tablet. <coughs> I've seen, uh, I've seen people who are just open the, I think I told you the story, it's a guy who basically pulled out his, uh, uh, iPad and train just like scrolling down a bit, just showing off and just putting it back in the bag and doing anything. <laughs> It's really, really funny to me. I always remember it. It was just like for show, you know. You didn't have anything to do with it. So, it's so like, just, just to backtrack in one second. So, um, what you're saying is, if you sit on these trains with, um, with the Apple logo uh, proudly displayed, you get attention from sexy women. Is that correct? That's the association. That, that's the way the marketing industry works. Is trying to create these imageries of what you would do. Uh, like one of the one of the no, listen, listen, I, I know, you're not being fair to me here. One of the things that the alcohol industry is doing is trying to imply that if you drink alcohol, you will get certain things. Uh, don't want to get off track here, but the the thing is that that's that's what sells alcohol. People think that if they drink alcohol, the same thing that happened to the people in the commercials will happen to them. And smoking used to be the same. They used to market it like you know, cool people drinking and couples and stuff at the smoking. It works, you know. Pe- people associate a certain picture and activity with a association with a group of people that do the same type of thing and this is why actors and actresses get paid sometimes to do certain things on the you know wear certain shirts and certain brands and stuff because people see the uh, you know Tiger Woods with the Nike cap and they think oh if you want to be a good golfer I could like put the Nike cap on and people think oh you're a good golfer because you wear Nike and you know that that's that's just the, you know you put it in people's heads and we oh well I'm not sure we owe anything but Apple Apple is doing a lot of the multi-billion dollar kind of brainwash you know you need a you need a very thin uh, like what what's it called MacBook Air which was a as far as I know it's a major failure I, I don't see anybody using these things they create this fashion and they sell it to people these you know so-called you know supposed to be like innovative things but things that existed for a long time and they create these urges for things and people look for the analogous things that are cheaper so very often they'll find something that's based on Linux uh, and works similarly to the iPod uh, the iPhone in some cases and, the, uh, and and of course Apple wasn't the first with these things Apple was just mass, mass marketing these things so people all of a sudden want those too but they no. wanted to be cheaper well uh, of course I was I was being flippant um, certainly uh, Roy you were just uh, Portraying the the advertising uh, story that uh, Apple wants to promote for its uh, for its tablet. But what I was going to say was this: um, with it, with a, certainly with the uh, sexy woman image. Um, if Apple would like to send me one of these tablets, I'll quite happily sit on a train and report back to them about any attention I may get from uh, the fairer you sex. Will. <laughs> it's, it's a group thing. Thing. It's a because uh, I'll tell you the way it's supposed to work is for people from the who own these things. They'll they will feel very proud of themselves because they'll think, oh, you know, I'm 
believing the dream, kind of. <laughs> yeah. People around them are also watching the same ads, so they will think that they should be expected to admire the same people. That's the reason if you see Michael Jackson or something in the train, you'll go, oh, Michael Jackson. It's because you are you think you're expected to admire these people. and But if you don't know who he is, if it's just some person at a train, you won't mind. But <laughs> it's the expectation that this person is really important that will make you behave in certain ways. And that's the same thing with all kinds of products and uh, and celebrities and uh, and in this case, that association with you know the Apple brand, like Apple is this famous brand, like famous, and you you know people putting the 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 even I always, I always uh, feel very amused when I see those products from Apple where you know they have this really waste of battery because of the, because the logo has to lighten up, has to like have the backlight on the you know on the logo and. And that kind of tells you that they try to allow you to have the tools to emphasize your association with the company. So even when you give a presentation, it's it's not enough to have the logo. It has to like show itself off. It has to like light up like like those cars with the neon lights at the bottom, which have no practical purpose other than to get some attention. I, so I, that I, that's just that. I think we mentioned this before, and I mean, you have to, whatever you think of um, Apple products and whatever people listening to the show think of Apple and uh, Apple products, you have to give Apple credit in that they've, they have turned what traditionally was seen as very unfashionable and geeky, uh, dare I say it, into fashion statements. I mean, computer no, was never seen. That's the case, though. I, I, I remember back in the days, the very old Macs when I was a kid uh, were very expensive, but they were like better designed than yeah. the IBM compatible type things. and. Um, it is, it is quite an achievement to create virtually a fashion brand out of a technology company. Um, Apple, the Apple logo, rightly or wrongly, is seen as a desirable piece of uh, lo- uh, a desirable logo <laughs> to have. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. That's right, we're going to say desirable <laughs> product. You know, the logo yeah, is around it. Um, because you traditionally, you know, computing and being interesting in computers was seen as something that was uh, a very reclusive pastime. It was uh, stereotyped as being many things, but fashionable and trendy was not one of them. And regardless of the rights and wrongs of uh, Apple's actions and Apple's products, they have successfully achieved that and bridged that gap between technology and fashion. And it's uh, it certainly is worthy of praise, and certainly in the history books in uh, hundreds of years' time, I think uh, Apple will get some recognition for, for being able to do that. Um, well, I'm anyway. not sure. I'm not sure it's much of an achievement. <laughs> well, because I, I know some, uh, even some racing, uh, racing cars companies. Even uh, I think Ferrari would sell you like caps and things like hats, and because just just the fact that you're you'd be associated with the yeah. culture of the. You know, so, so that shows you the the, the brand and the way. Then, then Ferrari was yeah, you know, racing cars. Uh, sports cars, and so it's it's got the uh, the edge over computing in general. For vehicles are seen as something. oh, they had the laptop as well. Remember, yes, Microsoft yeah. used to bribe the, the bloggers. <laughs> Ferrari. Yes, I remember that. No, not, not Microsoft. Microsoft did basically externalized the activity. They gave it to a PR agency and say, "Hey, have those laptops, you know, pass them to some journalists too." Oh, well, one, they, they were they're quite expensive. Um, I think they one of them. Were they red and black, if I remember correctly? They, yeah. They, yeah, they were well. Because uh, I remember I wrote a few pieces on this at the time because there was one particular blogger, and I can't remember his name, who actually got uh, offered one of these and that exposed it on his own blog. Um, and I, I wish I could remember the link for that because it was quite an interesting uh, piece, but he was contacted by the, the agency and uh, he decided to go the other way and obviously publicised exactly what um, communication he had with this agency offering him the... The laptop was, um, but yes, I'll, I'll have to dig that out. Uh, I suppose the uh, the FTC didn't offer him a laptop as a reward for reporting the incident or anything like that. So <laughs> that's the thing. That's the sad thing. Is people who do the right thing, they they, they don't get anything. Uh, and so there is no incentive to be ethical. Well, it just goes to show, I mean, you, all these, and, and we've covered, I don't think we've, we've talked much about um, gifting and that type of activity on the Tech Bite show, but for me, it just goes to show the uh, the quality of uh, free software, because myself, Roy, and every other free software and Linux advocate that writes a, writes a blog, has a site, writes articles, and produces audio casts, they don't get any um, gifts or enticements or, or rewards. I mean, the only reward we get, I suppose, if I write a nice article about Ubuntu is a free copy of Ubuntu. Well, uh, everybody gets that. Um, so we, there's nothing in it for us, yet people still write great things about Linux and free and open source software. Why is that? Well, there must be something more to it than just me having nothing better to do. And uh, 
it is a testament to how how decent and the quality of the software that we we're talking about. And maybe oh, it's that in its it, that in itself is a, is a very good advert for people who haven't tried Linux, who haven't maybe noticed what software there is is, is free and open source, to actually start getting involved and looking a bit deeper into the subject, to see what else is offered within the free and open source community for them. Um, and before I get up on my soapbox, Roy. Ho-